Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number seven of this NHL 24 Montreal Canadiens franchise mode here on my channel. Today we are getting into the 2025 offseason where we're going to be re-signing some contracts, re-signing staff, and just getting set up for the next season essentially. In the last episode, we did have quite a few comments, so we're going to get to those in just a second. But to just recap, we finished off the draft. Obviously, we lost to the Ottawa Senators in the conference finals, who went on to beat the uh, Colorado Avalanche in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup final and bring the Stanley Cup back to Canada. Apart from that, Laval made it to the exact same spot that we did in the conference finals there. Um, so that was, uh, you know, a good performance from our team, but also, you know, falling a little short as far as championships and things like that go. But we saw a ton of progress this offseason from certain guys like, you know, Nick Suzuki, Yuri Slapkovsky finally hit uh, above 90 overall, which is awesome. Lane Hudson looked absolutely fabulous, putting up 60 points in just his second year in the league. I guess that was pretty much his rookie season here still. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, Lane Hudson did actually end up winning the, I believe it was the con, or the Calder, sorry, this year. I do need to just quickly double check that, but I do believe Lane Hudson was indeed our Calder winner for individual awards. He was indeed. Okay, so there you go. Very good start, but um, let's get to the comments and just go over those quickly. So the first comment came from Robert Weber saying, Master class in drafting, the Habs prospect pool will be the envy of the entire league, juggernaut team in the making. So yeah, right now, if you look at our actual progress or as far as our team's depth and team's prospect pool goes, it is absurd. Like, there's nothing too crazy at the top end. Like, yes, we've got four or five elite players there, but if we go down into the actual system here, look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 elite prospects, not including goalies. And then a bunch of solid top six level players here. Um, we did pick up Oljevic in the last draft, which was awesome. Um, Maxime Massey is looking really good there. And yeah, there's just a lot of um, good young prospects in this pool right now as far as our team goes as far as the Habs overall prospect pool goes but of course Gabriel Daigle going to be hopefully the new mainstay in net here within about one season for the Canadians that is the goal is to bring him in as a pretty much 19 year old rookie and yeah it's going to be fun so the next comment here uh, was from Braden, Braden Cream who said this is a great draft he also said pretty much right after go after Romanov or Romanov um, so if we actually go and take a look here, um, I guess I advanced one too many days. We'll have to go and, you know, do all the re-signings here. But um, looking at the actual free agency pool, um, which I got to go over. Where is it? Pending free agents. There we go. If we go and look at the actual free agency pool, I think our defense is something we could sure up a little bit this offseason. I asked you guys who we should go after, and that was, you know, the majority of the comments back. But... Uh, Braden Cream said go after Romanov. Um, Michael. Or yeah, Mikhail Oman said um, you should go out, try to sign Romanov and Victor Hedman, even if it's just for one year. And the final comment came from um, Bergulio, who said, uh, sucks that you. Or sucks that a 3-1 lead was choked. Good vid nonetheless, though. And yes, of course, it's not in my control that our team choked the lead. Um, really, they just got to finish finish the job at that point. But Victor Hedman could be a very good signing for this team. I don't know if Romanov is actually on the market here still. we got to go and see. Um, so let's check all defensemen. And he is indeed. Okay, so we could potentially go and get him from the aisles. He is an RFA, though, so that could prove to be... Potentially a problem, something we might have to give up assets for, but we'll see. I mean, obviously, he is a Montreal drafted D-man. He's very solid, in my opinion, you know, 26 points over the last year there, plus 20, 30, 30 penalty minutes. Like, he's he's your prototypical kind of top four defenseman that you want in the NHL. Can play physically, but can also play with skill and speed. So, yeah, that is what we're looking at as far as the comments go. Let's get into the re-signing phase here now, though, because we have to do quite a bit of work when it comes to this section. So starting off, we're just going to go and look at all of the expiring players, and then we're going to sort by position afterwards. I always like to start at the back end with 
um, the goaltending, and of course we have four potentially expiring goaltenders here. If we go and look at the you know overall kind of system and setup, we're not going to sign Daggle just for one year, um, simply because we want him to go back to Victoriaville, try to get even more than 40 wins and a better than a 9-10 save percentage. We'll see if that happens or not. Regardless, one more year of junior is definitely going to help his development. So I think we are good to sign pretty much everybody else here for at least one more year. Jet Greaves might be the one guy that we kind of let go of here. Like, yes, he was a good free agent signing, but overall, I don't really want to change too, too much about this team. And I think we are just going to offer like kind of one year deals here. I don't want to spend too much money though, either, because if we are going to try to go after a guy like Hedman, that means we're going to have to give up other um, kind of chunks of money here and there. Maybe we try to move a guy like Josh Anderson or something like that. Obviously, Gallagher's making a lot of money, but we're not going to move him. Um, but Yelanen's also making a lot for what kind of value he's bringing to the team. We could probably find the same value in about a entry level or 950k contract player instead. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Apart from that, uh, you know, we should probably be signing guys like Clark Caswell and um, Solomon Pronger. Pronger barely got better so maybe we'll sign him this year to the um the farm team the Laval rocket but yeah i don't think too many of these guys down towards the bottom are really getting signed we'll sign florian jackai because you know he's barber's brother arbor is definitely going to be worth signing so yeah let's uh let's start off with the goalies here obviously we're gonna go one year at 2.75 million for flurry We'll go another one year at 1.8 million for um, Jake Allen, and then we will finish off with Caden Primo, um, and we'll pay him 975,000. So, if for some reason Primo falls through, then we'll go and sign Greaves instead. I'm not going to release him just yet, but at the same time, you know, we still have four additional roster spots to maybe sign rookies or players of that kind of level and caliber. Ugh, unfortunately, yeah, David Savard is going to be a good chunk of money. I'm going to pay him 4.3, and hopefully he accepts that. Harris is going to be cheap, uh, so we'll get him signed up. Cullimore, I think, again, same situation. We're just going to leave him for one season. Um, he's also playing on Victoriaville, funny enough, so if we put those two guys together... Um, as far as Cullimore and Daggle go, I think they should be fine as far as development curves and things like that. So we'll sign all the rest of these defensemen up to just the farm team, pretty much. I'll get William Trudeau signed up, and then everybody else here is good. So that's the defense. I think maybe Trudeau is the only contract that we actually signed newly. Um, but apart from that, yeah, looking good. Joel Armia. Again, another solid piece in this Montreal system. Nothing crazy as far as a player goes, but just very, very steady, very solid as far as what kind of production you're going to get out of him. Um, Heinemann, honestly, Heinemann's looking really good. He might be a player that we actually look to sign long term simply because, yes, we have Harvey Pinard and Sean Farrell, but we're going to be losing Max Pacioretty coming up here. So, really, Heinemann, like, yes, he's a two-way forward, and yes, he's going to be in the bottom six more than likely, but I want to see what does an eight-year deal look like for him. Two million. Uh, I'm going to sign him to a two-year bridge, I think, and just go 850k, because I'm not certain that he's going to be the guaranteed player that the top six potential states. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Apart from that, of course, yes, Jan Mizik we can sign, and of course, um, Florian Jackai we will also sign. That's going to be it for now. Um, I'm not going to sign Solnishkin, even though he had a great growth here, putting up 19, yeah, 19 points over 8 from last year. I'm pretty sure he got improved ice time too, yeah, so that helped. So of course, he'll get even more improved ice time if we leave him there for one more season. Of course, if that's not the case, we sign him to the, um, the Rocket, and then he's good to go. As far as centers go, though, we, this is where we've kind of got some, not controversy, but just we need to make a couple signings here. And these, these ones might be a little bit more tricky. So we're going to have to go about $1.7 million for Jake Evans to get him back. As far as Christian Dvorak goes, he wants to play for this team. 
but I'm just not certain he's he's the guy at two million for two years. So I think we'll bring in Pronger. Um, we'll keep Simono, and then well, yeah, we'll we'll bring in Pronger because yes, he could have a dominant 19 to 20 year old season. He got improved ice time. He improved his points. He decreased on shooting percentage, but he actually was playing in all the key minutes. You know, four game winning goals, things like that. You know, he's gonna be a good player. It's just more so a matter of what's best for his development at this point. And I'm honestly not certain as to what I want to do with his development. So maybe we'll just let him sit for now. But of course, again, same thing as Solnishkin. If he's not getting playtime for whatever reason, then we'll, of course, go and sign him. So let's advance one day here. I am going to have to go back and just make sure we sign all the staff because I totally dropped the ball on that. Now that I'm thinking about it. We did not get um, David Savard, which isn't great because I did want him to sign. Okay, so I think, yeah, Savard and Dvorak are the only two that didn't actually sign contracts here. Let's try 4.5 million for one year for Savard. And okay, he will take that, perfect. As far as goalies go, we did get everybody else to sign, so I'm just going to, I'm thinking about qualifying Jet Greaves. Because we could potentially have injuries, and obviously if that's the case, then that's not good. But, you know, uh, now we'll just sign him to the max kind of AHL contract there. And apart from that, I think we're pretty much ready to go on the player side of free agency. Of course, we need to go and just sign all the staff back up, because I did not do that, and that will be a problem, so... We got Ben Burns. We've got Ben Burns in here. That's funny. Um, very similar name to Brett Burns. But we'll also get Whitmore, or sorry, Whitman. Um, and then, of course, we have all of these, um, all of these amateur scouts, which is pretty much all we're focusing on. We're not really making a ton of trades or things like that. We're just trying to go out and get the best players, and then eventually build the team around all our draft picks that turns out to be fabulous and like yes that is the majority of what we've done of course you can go out and just build an entire team around not core pieces and like going and trading but we're not going to do that so let's advance another day or two here we should get the majority of these contracts okay we didn't get ben burns it's not great ah okay Okay, so the coaches all didn't sign, which is annoying, but we will have to go and offer them even more money, which is okay. We can do that. It's just frustrating because, oh, no, sorry, uh, Whitman did sign, so it's just Burns who wants the head coach role. Oh, that's what I did, was I didn't offer him the correct role. That makes more sense. All right. Come on, Burns, sign that deal. And is he not going to? Apparently not. Oh no! Oh no! We've watched it! <laughs> we don't have enough coaching budget to sign Ben Burns. That's not good. Okay. So, just give me a moment here as I clean up my messy management. Uh, yikes. Okay. I love that glitch where always one... Um, one surplus stays on the block even if you delete it. Okay, so coaching staff, we didn't have enough budget. That is a problem, so I just gotta go and fix that quickly. Coaching budget, let's toss a little more money in there. Remaining, we got 825K. That might be a little bit mm, scarce. Okay, so a million bucks, that's more manageable. We should probably get some arena operations going too. I'm sure there was some kind of owner goal. Well, maybe not, okay, so. Her bathroom's looking disastrous right now. That's pretty funny. Okay, we'll uh, upgrade the next parking lot. We'll upgrade concession, and yeah, we'll get this parking lot up to level three, get the club seats up to level three. I cannot believe how much budget this team has. This is crazy. I love actually being able to go and, you know, do all the repairs for the most part. You know, there's only, you know, what, we did miss three out of, like, nine, right? That's pretty good, or eight potential upgrades on the Bell Center, so... Yeah, that's good to see. Okay, let's go get this coaching staff figured out. Um, I want Ben Burns back. I mean, we why why would we fire off coaches, right? Like that's the thing is 
you look at it and yeah overall there's just really not a lot of need to actually go and have other problems with your coaching staff so what we're gonna do is just demote Cohen to the AHL head coach for now um, that'll kind of fix up our whole system here once we get rolling but of course we have free agency to go to and it looks to me like yeah Victor Hedman did not make it to free agency so we've got seven million dollars to work with um, and I think the main play here is of course going to be Alexander Romanov if he's available is he he might not be okay Romanov is not available so Looking at the comments, yeah, you guys wanted Romanov or Hedman. I don't think we're going to be able to do either of those because both of those players are going to have a ton of money on their books and on their value. But I am thinking with $7 million, we might be able to get Jake Chichar in here. Um, he wants to go to Calgary potentially, but at the same time, he's a very solid-looking D-man. Could fit our second defensive pairing potentially. We'd be stealing him away from the Ottawa Senators as they did not re sign him. But he wants six or seven years. I mean, if we go seven years, seven million, that's until he's 34. Obviously, we're not going to hold that contract for that entire period of time. But really, seven by seven, $49 million contract. That's a big chunk of money, but it's also an asset, right? That is the point of actually going out and using your cap space properly. So we'll see what happens, obviously. We, we can't be certain yet. But I do like how our team's shaping up. I do like how we've kind of built out our system here in Montreal. And please, Jake Chitrin and Ben Burns sign with our team. All right, so we do get Ben Burns, awesome. We are gonna immediately demote him back to AHL head coach because that's actually where he belongs. I don't know why he was being at all annoying and frustrating here with uh, setting up our system properly but obviously you know you want a decent rated AHL head coach we have a lot of generalists right now so as far as Holmberg took us and Holmberg's a great looking coach too might I add um he's got a good record too with our team so I can't really be too upset with how he's performed up to this point how he set up our team but at the same time we could definitely build a better than a 62 percent system fit um, from what you know we currently have and yeah Jared Holmberg was great cool but we're gonna be looking into the coaching market as well probably gonna be looking more at a forwards coach if anything as far as trying to get our system to match something properly but you look at the the fits and like okay nothing great 62 okay okay it could be better the coaching options could be better we're probably gonna wait another year as Holmberg at least is like all A's across the board for ratings so yeah, we can't really complain too loudly that we have a, a good coach. So, yeah. Um, all right, let's get advancing one more day. Did we did we get Chitron? I don't think we did yet. I think he's gonna. Oh, he doesn't sign. He rejects the nine by nine, or the forty nine million dollar contract. So that stings a little bit. So I guess we look at like Keandre Miller or somebody else. Like I, I really don't know who else we'd be going after at this point. Our team is definitely in win now mode and uh, we could bring in Petrie. Petrie could be a decent option for one year at five. Yeah, you know what, let's do that. Jeff Petrie, one year, five million. Maybe he turns out, maybe he doesn't as far as like, yes, he's been in Montreal. Yes, we traded him away to Pittsburgh. But Petrie will come back to Montreal uh, one more time here. So a one by five deal. It's nothing crazy, but uh, it's just a solid contract. So with that all set up and ready to go, I think we're pretty much set to go to the next season now at this point. And uh, yeah, it should be, should be fun as far as setting up this team and seeing how they kind of shape up and who grows, who doesn't, what happens. But let's get to it. All right, so we're looking really good as far as our signing, or as our as far as our ticket sales go. I mean, they should be good in Montreal, especially after the season we just had. Let's see what the owner goals are looking like. They want 39 sellouts. We're still a seller, technically. They want us to beat the Bruins in our home opener. And all right, um, let's see how the lines shape up. 
Ooh, your eye looking good. He gets total eclipse as his, uh, that's going to be fun. He's going to be able to screen the goalie really well, so that's awesome. We could potentially put him at center too. You know, his face-offs aren't great, but with total eclipse, at least he goes straight to the front of the net. Apart from that, the team, oh my goodness, look at Joshua Wah. That was the right decision to keep him in junior for one year. Um, wow, he has turned out to be fabulous. 85 rated at 22 years old. We've got a potential um, Calder candidate there in Joshua Wah. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to change his number to probably 97, though. I mean, we'll see. We'll, we'll figure out what number he actually wants to wear or should be wearing. Lane Hudson's 88 rated. Ooh, look at that. David Reinbacher, 83 rated. I don't know how he's still top six potential. Like, I look at that and go, well, shouldn't he be top four? Like, probably, but I guess not. And then we're just not playing Savard or Heinemann in the lineup. <laughs> okay. Um, how's the AHL looking? Do we have any, like, studs down in the AHL? Um, kind of. Okay. Like, nothing nothing bad here by, me, by any means. But... Nothing super special either. There's not like any... We haven't really signed up too many or any really elite rookies to come down and play in the minors, but that is all good. Logan Mayu is probably going to be a better fit there. And, you know, he's, we've got him as high top six potential, which I think is fair. Same with Arbor Jackai. Um, but Jackai we might actually bring up just to, you know, protect the other guys in the team. Jet Greaves is up to an 81, which isn't bad. Um, Adam Engstrom maybe we'll try to get some ice time for as well over... Uh, we'll see. I mean, I might I might bring up Matthias Norlander. I think it's going to be Arbor Jackai, though, more than likely. And yeah, if we flip flippity-flop that around with the players, then... Yeah, okay, that should be good. We'll bring Jacai up. I think that's going to be the best play. And then apart from that, nothing really in the AHL, so now we just get to kind of perfect the lines up here in the NHL. Do we want... Uh, I think we do want Kirby Doc playing center here. I am quite liking how this lineup has shaped up for the most part, though. The only issue I think I have is that Sean Farrell's not playing on the second line, which, I mean, is a, an easy enough fix. We just move him up there. And then Galley and Anderson are going to kind of fight it out for this bottom roll. But, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe everything works. Eh... I'm thinking we actually go Evans on the bottom, Galley up one, because yeah, I'm feeling Galley this year. He had a really solid season last year for the limited amount of time he played. Like 21 points in 46 games is solid. So yeah, we'll hold on to Gallagher in the in the second line there for now. Or sorry, on the third line for now. Um, I'm going to throw Harvey Pinard over on the one wing, and then we'll throw Heineman. Heineman's actually going to move up the lineup further, I think. He's at least getting third line minutes here over either Patchetti or Gallagher. Probably Gallagher. And then, yeah, okay. That looks a lot better. We can put Patchetti on his offhand because he's a sniper at least. Yeah, okay. That is actually a very solid lineup. Of course, you know, we have Slavkovsky and Caulfield probably on the wrong wings, but, you know, maybe that works still. I mean, if we keep a plus five... With the current structure, I'm not going to argue it. And then for now, I'm going to go Hudson over on the right side. We're going to go... Uh, how am I going to do this? Actually, no, there's no need to put Hudson on the one side because that's just going to throw everything else off. Honestly, Rhinebacker is probably going to be fine. I just want to play him in his role more than anything. And the only issue with the current setup is that we get two lefties and two righties with the, the way I have this laid out. And I really do think Caden Gooley should be getting top minutes because he is a solid defenseman for this team. But at the same time, Tyson Berry is a very poor fit with that bottom pairing versus David Savard is better, barely. <laughs> um... But I do very much like the hudson Rhinebacker combination. That was kind of the goal, was to get these two guys set up and playing 
um, together more than anything. I gotta check what number Jeff Petrie is supposed to be wearing because I honestly do not know off the top of my head. 64 for Rhinebacker is cool. I think that's going to work fine. I mean, we could give Rhinebacker number 23 as well. That's also a, a number I've seen him wear. I think that was just... Honestly, I think that was probably just right after the draft, if anything. But let's try... I don't think Barry's going to fit very well. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so this lineup is... Almost ready to go. I'm just gonna make a couple quick switches. First is gonna be numbers, and I gotta honestly look up numbers because I don't know players' specific numbers off the top of my head. 26, okay, that is not even remotely accurate to what he's currently wearing, okay. Okay, so Jeff Petrie, we're going to slap number 26 on his back. I don't know why he's wearing number 46, but that, uh, that's going to get fixed. Okay, apart from Petrie, um, we also have Joshua Waugh, who i got to figure out if 13 is actually his go-to number, if it's something else. Um, we're going to give Juan number 97, because um, that seems to be the number he's consistently wearing in Laval. Of course, number 10 is retired, so that's I think that's why it went to number 13 for him. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the closest number. So, All right, yeah, we'll stick with 97 on Wa. I'll go change those couple things quickly, and then uh, the last guy is Rhinebacker. And yeah, okay, 64 is the the common number there for him. So yeah, um, that looks pretty good. I think we're going to leave that as is for now. Patches wearing the A, I think, is still the right move for now. Give it another season, and it's going to be either Slaff or um, Hudson. One of those two guys will be getting probably an A. But uh, yeah, of course, Caulfield, Suzuki, we're not going to change those alternates. Of course, I wish we could have more alternate captains. But that's not going to be the case. Um, so let's get to the roster moves here quickly. Just make sure that we have everybody set up in the right spots. So we're going to bring up Arbor Jacai. I'm thinking maybe Oliver Kapanen would be a decent fit too, just to bring up as like an extra piece. But I think we're going to do Yasperi, or sorry, Yasperi, Jesse Yelonen instead. And then we will send Harris down, I think is going to be the play. All right, so we will do those. Um, well, actually, is Harris going to get scratched? No, he shouldn't. He doesn't fit our system properly anyway. So, yeah, we'll make those moves. Just get the lines fixed up a little bit. Of course, Harris not being in there is what's causing the issue right now. So we will throw Arbor Jacai in there. Of course, yes, you get two defensive defensemen. Um any way to fix that and only by playing Ghoulie on the bottom I mean then they get a zero at least I think that might have to be how we do this for now which is unfortunate but also just you know is what it is I wonder if we played Ghoulie and Rhinebacker together yeah they get a plus three but that's okay obviously we need Hudson play in top minutes and all right I think that is it we're pretty much good to go there we got Barry Yelonen and Anderson scratched um, of course, we could try to move cap space around. I think that's just going to be messy more than anything. And then, of course, we've got the AHL, which we just have to pretty much just go options, head coach preferred lines, and then it actually sets it up properly apart from... Well, Jet Greaves over Primo is interesting. Um, but yeah, the only other thing I'll do here is probably move... I don't know. We could... Probably just move Bodine out of the lineup because he's 25 and put Angstrom in. All right, and I think that is it. I think our lineup is ready to go. And now it's just time to do some scouting, get the, uh, get the scouts working with their magic, obviously. Who knows how good or bad this draft class is going to be. Um, of course, Gavin McKenna at the top is pretty amazing. Ryan Rubrick is a great player too, but... That's about it, honestly. Willie Weston, I have no idea if he's going to be amazing or not. These are all 
pretty much computer generated players at this point. Mikhail Gogolev getting up to that high a rating means he's probably got to be like a low elite or something. Like I don't usually see guys jump to 13 from 237th the year before. So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind for sure. Of course, our team. I don't, do we have a first round pick this year? We do, and they think we're going to end up, yeah, right in the middle of the pack, pretty much, which is probably a decent guess, but also this team surprised everybody last year, so why not do it again, right? <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, that is where our current situation sits. I'm going to go get some scouting done nice and quickly, and then once that scouting's done, then we will pretty much just wrap up the episode, I think, because... At this point, we're oh, we might we might start to sim. We might sim a couple games. We'll see what happens. But currently, yeah, that this is uh, kind of the first point of the season where we just stop, get some scouting moves done, and then go from there. Okay, guys. So we're just gonna finish simulating up through the preseason um, because that pretty much takes us up to the end of the. I've done two scouting dates now because the first little bit of scouting doesn't take very long at all. Um, but then we're pretty much up to the regular season here. Um, looks like Gooley was injured, but got better. Of course, I jumped in and played. Like, I actually... Controller player played one game in preseason, and of course, that was the one game we lost in overtime. To be fair, we were down, like, 5-2 going into the third. Um, ended up 6-6 going into OT. So, like, that was a pretty... This team can score. This team definitely has the abilities to score. The Like, look at that. 12 points from Slaff. Like, that's crazy. So... There's definitely scoring threats on this team. Um, honestly, I was quite impressed too with Joshua Waugh so far, um, but we'll see you know, if he can get his form going because that would be a huge addition to this Montreal team. And if that does end up being the case, man, like we, we could have two really potentially good lines in here. So yeah, anyways, keep that in mind, but also, you know, it's not do or die kind of set up either necessarily for the Canadians here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with where we're currently at. Um, we'll see how David Reinbacker adjusts to the NHL level. That's going to be fun as well. Um, but I do just need to go in and just make sure that those players numbers stick. Like the guys that I um, went and edited player numbers on, all I'm doing is just changing their preferred number pretty much. Okay. So they got all of Joshua Waugh's equipment wrong as well, which I mean, not really surprising it's because he's a junior player right that they're gonna get all that wrong so we'll fix that quickly um he's playing mainly with jet speed kind of equipment which is you know i like jet speed um so yeah i can't really say too much about that i'm i'm pretty happy that i guess he wears jet speed like that's that's all i can say so um i am just going to oh yeah okay um i was like sock talk maybe no so he does actually play with the white um, jet speed, but there is no white jet speed in NHL 24. EA, fix that, please. I would love to see a white jet speed um, because I, I do think the white sticks look pretty cool um, just because they kind of blend in with the ice better, right? But apart from that, you know, is he... He doesn't really have a preferred tape style from what I can see. It's really just that he tapes his blade the same color of whatever, like of the stick shaft pretty much so that it blends in that's what it looks like anyways so yeah if he's going black jet speed we'll stick with that Ooh, do not cancel that please okay and that is joshua Wah. and you know what looking at his profile picture i feel like you should probably have at least a one bar um facial hair going as well because right now that is not accurate at all so we're going to give him the full beard and we're going to give him Probably brown hair, maybe light brown. Light brown looks, yeah, uh, it's probably brown. Okay, so we'll go brown on the color, and then level one's gonna be like there, because yeah, that does kind of look look a little more accurate to what he's actually rocking right now, and then of course give him the full, full thing by the time he actually hits the playoffs, because that is exactly what we want to do with that setup. So, actually, you know what? Uh, the more I look at his profile pictures and stuff, I'm thinking probably chin strap is actually the style we don't want to go with rather than a full beard. Um, he definitely has the chin centric kind of style a little bit more. Like, yeah, he's still got a little bit of like upper lip facial hair there, but 
Yeah, okay. Um, so that is Joshua Waugh. I'm just going through making sure the details all kind of match up here. Um, I have seen Rhinebacker in some of my saves, like just for fun saves, end up with like a cage on, which makes no sense to me, but um, yeah, okay, that should be fine. I, I'm fine with how Rhinebacker looks. If we need to fix that later on, once he gets, you know, really good, then of course we can do that. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that should be fine for now. I don't think we're really adjusting too many other players. And okay, yeah, as long as Petrie's wearing 26, I don't care. So there you have it. That is where we are pretty much just going to leave off this episode. I know it's a bit of a shorter one here for this episode, but then we're going to get set up, go through the entirety of the 2025-26 season. Of course, you know, Gavin McKenna at the top of this draft class is going to be a franchise playmaker, I believe, at least a high elite, if not franchise level. But yeah, apart from that, you know, there's some power forwards, there's some snipers, there's this other guy named Laurent Bouillon, or Bouillon, I believe it's Bouillon is how you'd say that. Or Bou Bouillon? Yeah, it's, it's not Bouillon, it's Bouillon. I believe is how you'd say it, but I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. So again, guys, give me that pronunciation in the chat. Below, of course, there are certain guys like Depri, De, Depri, Depri, Depre. I don't know how you say it, Mark Depri probably, and then um, Marcel Saint-Jacques. So a couple pretty good French-Canadian names in there. Duravo as well, Louis, yeah, those are... I like the French Canadian names. They're always fun to try and pronounce, especially as an English speaker and not like I, I really can't speak French, um, even though, yes, I am a Canadian citizen, but like it's always I always find that fun to kind of mess around with. So anyways, guys, that is where we're going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe and hit notifications to never miss a video. And of course, leave comments to possibly get featured in the next episode. But that is it for me. And I will see you guys in the next one.